Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Maria De Simone, and I'm a professional astrologer. Today, I am going to talk to you about secondary progressions. This is a technique that astrologers use for prediction, and we often use this in connection to transits. So I wanna explain a little bit about the difference here. Transits are the placement of the planets in the sky at any given time. So right now, okay, let's say today, we know that Uranus is in uh, Taurus. We know that Pluto is in Capricorn and so on and so forth. We know that Mars is still retrograde in Gemini. Those are transits in the sky. And astrologers will connect those transits in the sky to your birth planets for predictive purposes. That talks about some major energy and events that may happen for you in your life. Well, progressions are a little bit different, but very powerful and so valuable to use in connection to transits. The secondary progressed chart symbolizes more of an internal shift that you're going through in your life. And when that secondary progressed chart is triggered by transits or you know eclipses, something going on in the sky, that's when events tend to manifest. But the secondary progress chart symbolizes your internal readiness for something to happen, for something to develop, for something to change in your life. And it is so valuable to watch and to look at. And the way that secondary progressed uh, aspects work in your chart is that you are born on a certain day, okay? So I was born May 8th, 1974. So we would look in the ephemeris, and this is not the correct ephemeris, this is, this is a 21st century ephemeris. I would need to look at a 20th century ephemeris, and I'm not gonna get that right now. This is just learning purposes. So uh, you would go to the ephemeris for the day that you're born and find that day. So, you know, for me, I was born May 8th, and let's pretend that this says 1974. It doesn't, it's not. But the day of your birth, you're gonna see the planets all lined up like this in your ephemeris, okay? You can get an ephemeris online. You can get a hard copy of an ephemeris. Everybody should be looking at an ephemeris. So Google ephemeris and uh, you'll find that for yourself. Now, you go to the day you were born. That's where the planets were placed. The way that secondary progressions work is that symbolically, one day after that, after the day of your birth equals one year of your life. And you can move forward looking, on average, we look 90 days ahead. So we take a 90 day snapshot of the planetary placements after the day you were born. And that tells us, that symbolizes 90 years of your life. So one day equals one year of life. That is how secondary progressions are calculated. Now, the secondary progressed chart that you have serves as an internal stimulus of, well, what's happening in my, in my internal world? What am I ready to experience? What, what am I ready to have uh, enter my life, leave my life, learn, whatever the case may be? This is all shown in your secondary progress chart. And like I said, when transits occur, stimulating your progress chart or stimulating your birth chart, then the, uh, the symbol symbolized events come out very often. So I wanted to specifically talk to you about what happens when your personal planets in your secondary progress chart change signs. Because these years of your life are monumental. And the outer planets in a progressed chart don't move a lot. They're, think about it. If outer planets move slowly, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, these guys move really slowly. Well, if we're looking at a 90-day span of time, how far do you really think Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are going to move? Not very far at all. Saturn, for the most part, is the same thing, although Saturn does move a little bit more during a 90-day time span. And the same thing for Jupiter, will we'll move a few degrees. Jupiter and Saturn will move a few degrees in your lifetime, in your secondary progress chart. Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, not so much. So we don't really pay attention to the outer planets in progressions. We focus on the personal planets, Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and we focus on the angles of the progressed chart, the ascendant, the descendant, the fourth house, and the 10th house cusp. So the cusp and even your progressed house cusps, they all become very important for timing. So 
in a person's lifetime, the average lifetime of this 90 day period that we're looking at, the progressed sun will change signs three times on average. Progressed Mercury, same thing on average. And we will all have a progressed Mercury either going retrograde in our progressed chart for many years, or we will have, uh, if we were born with Mercury retrograde, it will go direct at some point in our lifespan. And so you want to track that in progressions. Now, Venus will typically change signs about three times in a lifetime. And Mars will typically change signs twice in a lifetime. So the years that your progressed Sun, Mercury, Venus, or Mars changes signs, or the years that your progressed angles change signs, which is about once every 30 years or about three times in your life, those particular years are very significant in your life development and you want to track them or you want to have your astrologer talk to you about those years of your life and what they could mean for you. This is important. This is important to look at. The progressed moon changes signs a little more often and it is a very useful technique in timing, but the progressed moon will change signs about every two and a half years because the progressed moon will go through a sign faster. Think about it. If the sun, if the, if the moon changes signs every two and a half days, right, in, in real time, symbolically by progression, that turns into two and a half years. So our progressed moon will change signs much more often. That symbolizes a temporary new emotional focus for us. And it also is a very useful indicator for timing. And when your progressed moon transits the angles of your chart, big life changes are happening. Let's talk about orb. We use a two degree orb for progressions, no more. Every astrologer in the world agrees on this. This is one of the few things that astrologers are unanimous about. So embrace it and accept it, okay? This is one of the rare things that every astrologer will agree with. You do not use more than a two degree orb for a progressed aspect. And so it is typically one degree applying, exact or partile, and then up to up to one degree separating. And sometimes you could even shorten it and, and you really are gonna see the magnificence of a progressed aspect within a degree and a half, to be to be truthful. A degree up to a degree applying and up to half a degree separating is the most meat of a progressed aspect, but every astrologer will go up to two degrees in orb. Okay, so I think I've covered some of the the more mechanical, technical aspects of progressions. And now I want to talk about, oh, you will look at your standalone progress chart every year because that shows you where your, your planets have gone by progression. It shows the angles and how they have progressed as well as the house cusp. So you do want to look at your standalone progress chart, but then you want to get a, a, a time search of your progressed aspects for the next year, progressed aspects can sun, moon, Mercury, or, you know, all of that. And progressed Saturn or Jupiter very rarely can change signs during your lifetime. That can happen sometimes for people. But again, it, that's rare. That's rare to happen. But it does. It does happen. Because think about it. In a three-month time span, Jupiter can change signs. So can Saturn. And the same thing for planets going retrograde and direct other than Mercury. Uh, if you were born with a Venus, Merc Venus retrograde in your chart, in all likelihood at some point during the progressed cycle, it will go direct because Venus retrograde is a 40-day thing. So it will go direct if you were born with Venus retrograde. Pay attention to the year that it goes direct direct. That's a huge year in your life. If you were born with Venus direct, but you look in your ephemeris and you see that it does go retrograde at some point during that 90 day span, look at the year that Venus is going retrograde. That's going to be important for you. Same for Mars. Now, if you're born with Mars uh, retrograde, it may or may not turn direct in your, in your lifetime. And if you were born with Mars direct, just look in the ephemeris. It's not very likely that it'll turn retrograde, but if you were born before, right before a Mars retrograde period, it could, okay? So now, I want to spend the rest of this video telling you about real life astrology experiences that happen when the progressed sun changes signs, when progressed Venus and Mars change signs, and even, even progressed Mercury. Um, 
I could use my life as an example because I've lived my life and I know my life. So this is going to be real life astrology with Maria sharing Maria's experiences. But please, write in the comments. Let me know your experiences of what happens in your life during certain major life progressions. So when the progressed sun changes signs for you, which again is going to happen for everybody about three times in your lifetime, this is a big internal identity shift, very huge. And you're always going to be what your sun sign is. You know, that's that's you for life. But progressed sun brings in another layer of who you are learning to become, qualities that you're learning to develop. And this is going to last for 30 years. So get used to it. So I was born with the sun in Taurus. And so far in my life, the uh, progressed sun has gone through Gemini and it has recently ingressed into cancer a few years ago. So now I have like a four degree progressed sun in cancer as of today. So I was, I'm always a Taurus. That's my sun sign natally, but I did have a 30 year on average span in my life of progressed sun in Gemini. What happened in my life during the progressed sun in Gemini? Well, very significantly, I came into my own in terms of communications and huge lessons connected to writing, speaking, teaching, all of that. Okay, that's a, this is a very generic example, but I want you to understand how simple it could be and then how profound it could be when it touches your birth chart, when progressed planets touch your birth planets in a certain way or your birth angles or when transits stimulate either the progressed chart or, you know, your natal chart together, it's just, that's when major things happen. So that is the progressed sun. Now the progressed sun went into cancer for me a few years ago and now I went out of the Gemini phase, at least as far as my sun sign goes, and into a more Cancerian vibe where in addition to being the Taurus sun, now cancer traits are very important in my life. So I have become much more of a homebody, much more of a nester type of person. I mean, I always was actually, to be honest with you, but home, family, real estate, cancer, rule matters became a very big focus for me. And in fact, the first year of my progressed son moving into the sign cancer was a year that I was looking to move, relocate, and I bought my very first house. I was 45 years old, and before then, I lived for 22 years, I think it was, in uh, my ex-husband's house in Queens. I lived there, I raised my children there, and then it was time for me to move, and I progressed sun goes into cancer and that whole first year I was consumed with looking for a house, buying a house, setting up home, new home, and it was very reflective. Now, for a woman, I will say that when the progressed sun changes signs, there's something else that tends to happen. You can attract new male energy into your world and you want to pay very close attention to this. So, you could have a new love interest, a new male love interest, if you're a heterosexual woman. You can have a big development with your father, or possibly a big male energy development in your life the first year that your son changes signs in progression. So whatever year that is, pay attention to it. Write down in your astrology journal what happens related to the sun sign. How are you now feeling the internal shift connected to uh, your solar needs and how they're changing and how is that now becoming manifest in the external world so the year my progress sun changed signs it, you know remember progressions are internal so how did it so quickly become an external thing well in my case that year there were eclipses in cancer and capricorn and i also had other transits going on to my personal birth chart so that this was triggered very heavily into a very fast external manifestation so that's the progressed sun pay attention to your progressed sun hugely important if you're a man and your progressed sun changes a lot is going to shift about your identity it's just going to be a very important part year of your life so do pay attention Next in line is going to be progressed Mercury. So progressed Mercury is interesting because it will, uh, it's going to change signs, but it's going to either go retrograde or direct. So it, it has a little bit more of a variable rate. 
Now, in my case, I was born with Mercury in Taurus and Mercury went into and through Gemini and then Mercury got into Cancer. Mercury in Cancer then turned retrograde for me and it happened to turn retrograde conjunct an angle in my chart, my fourth house cusp and, uh, and next to my Mars, my natal Mars placement in Cancer. And this all happened around the time that I was buying a house. So that added to the literal contract, real estate contract changes for me. So uh, progressed Mercury changing signs shifts what you think about, your mind, your mental focus, what you want to learn about. That uh, your relationship with siblings could change with progressed Mercury changing signs or going retrograde or direct. The year that it changes signs is important to pay attention to, but the year that progressed Mercury in your chart goes retrograde or direct is hugely important for you to pay attention to in your life journey. And again, you want to look at the degree, the sign and the degree, and then compare it. Are there transits in the sky that year that are triggering that degree? What does that mean for me? Okay, this is what you look at as an astrologer, as an astrology student. Moving on, progressed Venus changing signs. Now, this is exciting. This is this is a big deal. Uh, I always say to my clients, the year that progressed Venus changes signs, what you love and how you make money, and sometimes who you love changes. And it does. It certainly does. So I was born with Venus in Aries. Venus went into Taurus. And the year Venus went into Taurus by progression was the year I got married. Then Venus is spent 30 years going through Taurus and as of today it is at the very very end of Taurus like 29 degrees 58 minutes and the reason why it's at the very end is because I am about to have a huge Venus progression change. Venus is going to change into Gemini on December 20th so today's December 12th and literally in a few days my progressed Venus is changing signs. So I know as an astrologer that the next year of my life is pivotal to pay attention to in terms of progressed Venus, uh, Venus ruled matters. Okay, so progressed Venus is going into Gemini. So I'm going out of a Taurus phase and more into a Gemini phase. So now multiple revenue streams are going to become more important for me, right? Gemini is duality. Venus is how you make money. So I will be heavily focused on more multiple revenue streams. And I'm already seeing this actually, and I already have... I have plans in, in work in the works for that. So this is very accurate already. But, you know, of course, as an astrologer, I'm, you know, maybe cheating a little because I'm seeing this and predicting it. So I know how to plan. Um, so that is about the financial part. As far as your love life, okay, what you love changes, who you love changes. Now in Gemini, maybe there's going to be two people. Maybe there's going to be a choice. But for the next year, my love life and my financial life is certainly going to be a very important, interesting part of my life. Whether or not that's positive or negative depends on the transits and how the transits are hitting that progressed Venus, as well as where what that progressed Venus at zero degrees Gemini does to my birth chart. So in my case, in this case, it's going to be very positive because... uh, in, in the spring, we're going to have Pluto going into early degree of Aquarius, zero degrees Aquarius, which is very rare that this is happening at this time. And my progressed Venus will be at zero degrees of Gemini. So that's going to make a trine. Pluto progressed, uh, sorry, transiting Pluto will make a trine to my progressed Venus. And that is going to activate some really yummy, juicy stuff connected to Venus rule matters for me very specifically during the time that Pluto is in Aquarius this in 2023. So I can time that and use that timing to my advantage. Now, uh, there are some other transits that you could pay attention to that would stimulate progressed Venus, such as when transiting Venus goes into Gemini, when, you know, things like that, smaller transits, lunations may trigger it, so on and so forth. So this is what you want to pay attention to in your chart with your progressed Venus. Progressed Venus at zero degrees Gemini is actually going to make a really nice link Uh, It'll move to make really nice links to my birth chart. Remember, there's a two degree orb here. So we're not looking at something eight degrees away. We got to be strict. 
So I do have natal Venus at, uh, at just under four degrees of Aries. So in about two years, that's going to get even better when progressive Venus makes a sextile to my natal Venus. Just giving you some examples. But this year, this December 20th, 2022 to December 20th, give or take 2023, because it's a year that my progressive Venus is changing signs, I know it's time to pay attention to Venus matters. With Venus going in Gemini, aesthetics might change for me. My aesthetic, my look, I might become more uh, sociable, okay? Really, I might, you know, with, with Venus going into Gemini, I might actually want to talk to people on the phone. I actually might want to have conversations with people at the gym. <laughs> I might become a lot more social. So progressed Mars. Let's talk about progressed Mars. Now, this is another cool progression, and I really noticed this hugely for me because Mars is my chart ruler. And this is another nugget. This is gold, okay? Your chart ruler, when it changes signs by progression, major, major life events are gonna happen for you. So if you're Ven if you're ruled by Venus, if you're Taurus rising or Libra rising, when your progressed Venus changes signs, it's even more important for you. If you're ruled by, by Mercury, if you're Gemini rising or Virgo rising, your progressed Mercury changing signs is even more important for you. If you got Leo rising, progressed Sun, okay, you get the idea. So, uh, and, you know, use the traditional rulership. So if you have Aquarius rising, you would use Saturn. It's not going to change much. If you're uh, uh, Pisces rising, you're going to use Jupiter, not going to change too much but one of those may go retrograde or direct. And if you have Scorpio rising, you're going to use Mars. Okay. So progressed Mars changing signs. If you have Aries rising or Scorpio rising, it's going to be even more important for you. But regardless, progressed Mars is going to change signs on average twice in our lifetime. So this is rare when this happens. The year that progressed Mars changed signs for me, gigantic with life changes for me, okay? So uh, my, I was born with Mars in Cancer. Mars in Cancer is the homebody sign, you know? We're, we're about home, family, and nurturing, and all that jazz. And what happened the year my progressed Mars changed into Leo, I can't even begin to tell you how Leo my life got. It was insane. And I don't have any planets in Leo in my natal chart. But the year, and, and I will tell you, this was two years. This was the, the this was, I, I say pay attention to one year, to the first year. But remember, to be fair, progressions have a two degree orb of influence. So for these really slow moving progressions, you can really give it a year and a half to two years and see the impact in your life. So the first year, the most important, but pay attention because it can be up to two years, especially for, you know, Venus and Mars. So with Mars, the year that it went into Leo, huge, my whole identity changed. Uh, it's my chart ruler. I'm Aries rising. That year, I became a celebrity astrologer. How did that happen? Well, Leo is the spotlight, Okay. And that year is when I started filming video horoscopes. And this was a long time ago. This was 2000, 2008 or 9. One of those years is the years that uh, the year that my progressed Mars went into Leo, 2008. It was 2008. And that year is when I started filming video horoscopes. The Insightful Astrology Video Horoscopes began. I also started filming my own YouTube astrology cooking show called Bite Size Astrology. And the, the largest divination website in the world, tarot.com, that year made a contract with me, made, uh, syndicated my video horoscopes. And I became their video astrologer. And Insightful Astrology Video Horoscopes were very successful on their channel for many years after that. And it became, it, it really put me on the map as an astrologer and helped me become a celebrity astrologer. You know, I, I hate, it's cringy to even say that, but I'm using that word because it's Leo. And I really want you to understand the significance of, you know, the progressions changing into the sign and how you take on the flavor and how, because this was my chart ruler, it was so much more important. So, uh, so that year that happened. Also what happened that year is, so as a woman, 
the type of man I was attracted to physically changed really dramatically. So interesting. And before that, I was married until, uh, well, I, my, I wasn't legally divorced until 2011, but my ex-husband left in 2007. And my ex-husband really embodied the cancer, like a Mars and cancer vibe. He was, um, he was overweight. He was clinically obese at, at one point. So he, and he had, you know, big family energy. Okay. He did a big family energy. So he embodied this Mars and cancer. And I was very attracted to that. Well, progress Mars goes into Leo. And do you know what I've been attracted to and what has been attracted to me ever since? The muscle men like literal bodybuilders, literally. And this is not something that I consciously went after. This is what I was attracting very easily. So the man that I met in 2008, about 13 months after my ex-husband left, I met someone else and we started dating and he was a, a amateur bodybuilder. It's amazing. And, and any man that I dated was with, fell in love with after that point, because my progress Mars is still in Leo, they have always been in phenomenal physical shape. They were all bodybuilders, not professionally, but it was a thing. Like these are the men who would be at the gym for hours. And I wasn't, I'm not looking for that. That's just what I ended up attracting. And um, I just thought that was so interesting that, that that shift happened with the type of men that I was attracting and attracted to. But me, because Mars was my chart ruler, action, energy, what motivates me, what I went after, became very Leo, really did. And I think you could see that. Also my creativity, really owning my creativity as a human being and as an astrologer, huge for me with progressed Mars and Leo. So that's what happens when your progressed Sun, Mercury, Venus, or Mars changes signs. I wanna talk about the angles next because the years that your progressed angles change signs are also hugely important. And this is gonna be different. Now, depending on the house system that you use, I use the Placidus house system. So, so the year that the progressed ascendant and descendant change of signs is not gonna be the same year that the progressed fourth house and 10th house cusp change of signs. But they are all gonna have this on average, on average, 30 year cycle. It's a little bit less than that, but just on average. So that means about three times in your life, your progressed angles are going to change. My progressed ascent, my ascendant started out at late degree uh, Aries, right, and it went into Gemini, uh, went into Taurus. I'm sorry, <laughs> hello, went into Taurus for 30 years and then went into Gemini, which is where it is right now. So my progressed ascendant is late degree Gemini, and and you notice changes when your progressed ascendant descendant changes signs. You notice changes that year in your identity and your relationship dynamics. So pay attention to that. The year that your progressed midheaven and fourth house cusp changes signs becomes very significant. Uh, the year that my progressed midheaven, so my natal midheaven is in Capricorn. The year that my progressed midheaven went into Aquarius. I, I started to really become more open to astrology and interested in things like that, the metaphysical world. And the all of these years, I have been a professional astrologer. I haven't been an astrologer for 30 years. I've been an astrologer for 20 years. But I think it's interesting how the metaphysical spiritual world became a very big part of my life. I did have a career change at the zero degree year, but it wasn't, it was, um, I, I worked, I started working for a nonprofit, which is also Aquarius. Um, teaching autistic children. So that was when I first got the ingress <clears throat> into Aquarius, the midheaven. And and uh, you'll see changes with fourth house family dynamics to that year. So pay attention to that. This year, my progress midheaven is changing signs again. I'm at the very end of Aquarius and, um, and I'm forgetting the exact date, but it's coming up soon. It's, it's not, it's very soon after my progressed Venus going into Gemini. So it's very early 2023, I think it's February, but um, my progressed midheaven and fourth house is changing signs again, and it's gonna go into Virgo Pisces. So I will have a Pisces midheaven by progression and a Virgo fourth house cusp by progression. And um, the year that that changes, I know there's gonna be major changes in my home and family life and in my career. So I already know that the next year of my life, year, um, year and a half of my life, 
both of my kids are probably getting married and my son who lives with me now will move out. So I already can see that these changes are going to happen right on time within the uh, one and a half years or so after my progressed fourth and 10th house cusp changes. I'm also going to have major changes in career. But again, you have to decide, are they going to be positive, negative, difficult? That depends on the transits that are happening to your progressed midheaven fourth house cusp, as well as what that degree looks like in your natal chart. Is that conjunct a planet? You know, that kind of a thing. So for me, it's going to be really good because when my progressed midheaven goes into zero degrees Pisces, it will immediately engage in a trine aspect to my natal Saturn at, uh, at one degree, 52 minutes of cancer. And Saturn is the chart, is the ruler of my midheaven natally because I have a Capricorn midheaven natally. So for me, I know that I'm entering a, a two year period at least of immediate, really good things happening professionally very strong in communications and writing and all of that because my Saturn is in the third house. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on progressions. I actually really enjoyed presenting it and just talking to you about different examples in real life astrology. Apply this to your birth chart, guys. Look at your standalone birth chart, your progress standalone. Look at your progressions for any given year because the, the year that your progressed planets change signs, I promise you, will be life-changing. And let me know about how it's changing for you in the comments, okay? All right, thank you, guys.